my initial plan for this week's episode <clears throat> is on temporary hold. I recently received my retro as of this recording, my retro my poly mic. I've done some recorded some unboxing of the console. I plan to do some footage capture of it and talk about my experience using the system. Um, and you remember I'm experiencing some technical difficulties again as of this recording. I'm recording this like a couple days after I got it, so still being worked on with um the support from Imagi. I will discuss my experiences with them and what it took to get this all straightened out in that actual video. But in the meantime, um, I'm doing a follow up on my uh, world con mess video. Uh, things got, for lack of a better term, um, worse in the sense of revelations about what happened. Uh, so what came out is that Dave McCarty disqualified a whole bunch of Chinese language works by Chinese voters on the basis of them being quotes from a slate. Now, when I went to the Spokane Worldcon, what was going on there was the sad and rapid puppies situation, which was a problem of a slate by a whole bunch of very far right leaning um, people, one of whom was like one of the founders of Gamergate, um, trying to, and also one of whom was also kicked out of the um, science, fiction writer, science Fiction Writers Association for harassment of African-American writers of, on this, um, within the organization, um, including N.K. Jemison. And one of the things that at the Spokane Worldcon was the decision was made that because you can't just disqualify works because they're on a slate, that was the actual reason given, um, Instead, they developed the E Pluribus Hugo system for calculating nominations as a way of effectively blunting the impact of slates uh, by going, okay, but obviously spreading out the power of, of your nominations to the point that actually a, that if you just do the works that are nominate the, the limited number of works under a slate, you're actually going to uh, have less power over what gets nominated in terms of like, just nomination of, uh, in terms of the calculation and the algorithm than if you are, if you nominate your taste. Now, this doesn't mean that you couldn't say have a larger number of works within a slate, but in any case, it, it, it's a tactic that effectively worked, that had um, blunted the impact of the puppies when it comes to hijacking the uh, Hugo Awards, the point where they kind of went off into Dragon Con, but because the Dragon Con voting is also open to the masses, they in turn had less impact there as well. So it's it kind of helped bring the whole puppy saga to an end, so to speak. So the fact of McCarthy effectively going no actually we could have disqualified the slate votes after all seems uh the odds the wrong term because that implies a not a sense of irregularity because there's, but there's a sense of regularity but a sense of it not being clear what's going on when it is clear in fact what is going on that this is the but this is Dave McCarty taking the voting power of these of the, the Chinese attendees away from themselves and out of their hands because you didn't think there'd be any English language translation of those works, I guess, or because or any or of unexamined racism or very much examined and accepted racism on his part or any other number of possible issues. Um, so that's, that's just a bad. And on top of this, the new story has been picked up far and wide. We recorded the original story um, video about this. that had been picked up recently by the guardian. Since then, this has been picked up by, um, 
by the New York Times, uh, where they interviewed John Scalzi. It's got picked up by, like, not just picked up by NPR. No, it got picked up by NPR and played on Morning Edition. NBC News picked this up. Didn't get on the air, but it made on the air on NPR. So, mil so millions of people on their drive to work heard the story about what happened with the Chengdu World Con and the voting process. And the story broke on NPR after the revelations came out about the disqualification of Chinese language authors by McCarty. One of the sentiments that's been coming up in some fan circles is, oh, this is a standalone incident. It's a one-off. It's a tempest in a teapot. It will let this blow over. In a couple years, everything will be fine. No one will remember this. Like, it can get worse than this. But not to put too fine a point on it, the ways in which it can get worse are situations where, in terms of the mass general public acknowledgement and um, or mass media grabbing hold of this, it worse in ways where it coming out of, a, of people saying, oh, it's a tempest in a teapot, we can ignore it and it will blow over, they will latch onto that and they will rip into it like um like um a new york steak thrown to some very hungry dogs uh like the ways that this can get worse are in terms of level of severity both in terms of of introspection and introspection but inspection and people drilling down into speculative fiction fandom as a community and um, on the Hugo Awards in general are in order of severity the Daily Show covers it 60 Minutes covers it or an equivalent news, mag news magazine show on a major television network and one that is generally more accepted like not a Fox News thing not an AO um, all one American network thing like yes, MSNBC is more left leaning, but them covering it, um, on like Rachel Maddow or on it getting on CNN or on, um, again, again, 60 minutes or whatever the ABC or, and, or ABC global is and that sort of thing. Or actually possibly worst case scenario is this ends up on um crap and now i just fault name off my head i'll edit this chunk out um uh john oliver worst case scenario is john oliver finds out about this because he will because he's he's got researchers He's got like a research staff that, or it feels like he has a research staff that, uh, that Errol, a research staff that Errol Morris would, would, would be envious of. As of this recording, John Oliver has not covered this. And I realize by state, by saying this, that I am tempting fate and creating not only an opportunity that John Oliver will cover this, but that because I Creative Commons license my videos, that John Oliver will will incorporate a clip of me saying this into the video it, it, or into the episode of his show as a way of him to go, oh, oh, you did see this is coming after all or something to that effect. So, uh, it doesn't happen. Um, but in any case, we can't pretend that this will blow over. It's out there. It's out there in a visible enough manner that 
that this is going to get talked about for some time. And it's something that people will look at when people look up the history of the Hugo Awards, it's going to sit there as a giant. We're past an asterisk. We're, we're at like a giant stain on the record of the Hugo Awards in a way that the puppies weren't. The puppies were a group of people trying to come in and wreck havoc. This is a fundamental failure of the organization of the awards themselves. And my thoughts on, again, on what needs to be done are, at this point, at least for a few years, and by few years, I mean potentially even a decade, but Hugo Awards need to be independently audited the way that the Academy Awards are. There is an entity independent who handles the nominating process, who, who audits the nominating process, who was given guidelines on clear guidelines on why works would get disqualified. And they would be actively monitoring the entire nominating process. They would then actively monitor the voting process and edit that and make sure everything is above board. And that needs to happen for at least five years, if not an entire decade. It doesn't have to, I wouldn't necessarily say it needs to go on for perpetuity, but it needs to go on for a significant period of time. But I've already discussed that the people who have previously involved, like, across, like generally, like, who go from Worldcon to Worldcon is on a basis of they have years of institutional knowledge, maybe they need to go. Dave McCartney being a classic example of this. I think as a part of this as well, the administration, I think I said this last time, but it bears repeating, the administration of the Hugo Awards needs to come in-house. It needs to be handled within the purview of the Mark Protection Committee. Additionally, overhaul of the lineup of the Mark Protection Committee. This is not to say that the people on the committee should be people from outside of fandom entirely. Quite the contrary. The absolute last thing we need is people who don't care about science fiction in charge of protecting the mark of what it, the, the trademark of what is ostensibly meant to be the most significant award given out by science fiction fandom, not science fiction writers. That's the Nebula Award. Um, at least American science fiction writers, or like, but like within global science fiction fandom, the Hugo Awards try to present themselves as the creme de la creme, the, the, the indicator of the pinnacle of what has come out in a particular year. And it's not necessarily actually that, as is with all awards, but having people who are within fandom, who are fans of science fiction and want to see it thrive as a medium, having them be as involved in the award cross process at the mark protection level and the award committee is a necessity. But... For the sake of making things, do I'll basically help making sure that this doesn't happen again. We got a clean house, and this includes people who I've met personally and have spent good time in their company. But I have admit, also admit I have not had to be involved with them in a business sense, in a org, in a running anything sense. So there's that. Other things are like m slightly minor, like the world, like the Hugo Award or the, or the World Con board meeting is run using, among other things, oh, it's run using what's known as Robert's Rules of Order, which are a basically a very old system for organizing and structuring meetings. Um, and I un and there have been some criticism of the use of Robert's rule of order order in sense of it is a dated work and it's something that it comes to how meeting organization is structured is very out of date in the sense of well they are of 
lots of more recent meetings don't tend to use Robert's rules of order anymore. There are other structures for organizing how a meeting is run and who has control of the floor. And that's sort of thing that handles the process where you don't necessarily have to have like band distributed pamphlets on how like cliff notes on how Robert's rules of order work with, for people who come into the meeting because such information on the rules isn't distributed by the people at the meeting themselves. That sort of thing. There need to be, like, so there need to be changes. They need to be dramatic. They need to be sweeping. And they need to be made with the thought of, with, with the context of, we have come dangerously close to dropping below the trust thermocline. We have dangerously come to the point of where this could have painted the Hugo Awards forever. It hasn't yet, but in, or, but in order to keep it from happening, we have to not screw up not just the Glasgow Awards, not just the Seattle Awards, but subsequent awards for, again, at least five years to a decade afterwards. And that's going to take a lot of work. That's going to be find, take finding a new group of people to run things. With knowledge, like, Certainly, like, talk to the people who ran things before to get some of this institutional knowledge, but with full awareness that, in reality, the painful lesson we have learned, we should, we need to learn from Chengdu, is the way things used to be didn't work, and we were lucky. We have been skating by for decades based on the idea that we are for lack of a better term, uh, uh, that that uh, so long as everyone follows the norms, so long as we stick with the institutional knowledge and everyone involved is a good act, rational, above board actor, everything will be fine. And as we've learned, like we've managed to resist problems through the puppies of outside actors, outside bad actors coming in and trying to destroy things. But now we have hit the situation where internal actors were not acting with, were not operating with the best of intentions or were not operating fully above board. And we had no checks and balances to stop them or, and the only reason we, why we caught them is because they is because the ultimately they had to release the numbers, the numbers for how the voting went and everything else had to come out. And so at some point they had to show their hand and reveal that in the standard deck of playing cards, somehow they had um, five aces or basically that they were cheating, that cheating had happened in the terms of, of butzing with the numbers. It sucks that this happened in the, uh, this happened at all but we absolutely have to make sure it doesn't happen again. I am not able to go to the Glasgow World Cup to vote in the board meeting, but I am able to go to the Seattle World Cup. It feels weird that whenever, like for these, like when the puppies things happened, the world con that was instrumental for starting things in motion for E Pluribus Hugo, which ultimately also helped catch this, was at the world con I went to. And it's now comes up again with Seattle. So to put it another way, these events that have happened at the Chengdu world con have made it clear, not that you shouldn't go to world con because the Hugo awards are, are iffy. It's that if you, if you are a fan of science fiction, and you think the Hugo Awards sound pretty neat, you absolutely need to go to Worldcon. And I think this is probably going to be one of the, again, much as with the Spokane Worldcon, one of the more heavily attended board meetings of in world in recent Worldcon history. 
So we shall see how that goes. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.